Welcome to topic 6.6 .6 and 11.4, which is reproduction. Um, we're just going to jump right in. Reproduction is the pr production of new individuals by existing members of the same species. Um, humans reproduce sexually, um, producing genetically unique offspring. And so what that means is we've got gametes, or sperm and egg cells, from mother and father, and they fuse to produce a new, unique individual. Um, the flip side of this would be asexual reproduction, where a cell essentially clones itself, and offspring would be clones of the parent cell. Your first assessment statement asks you to draw and label diagrams of the adult male and female reproductive systems. Um, these are probably actually some of your more difficult drawings as they're, they are very detailed. Um, just an overview of the male system, there are two testes um, located in the scrotal sac that hang outside of the body cavity of a male. And this is an interesting adaptation um, that's essential because the optimum production temperature for sperm is about two to three degrees lower than body temperature. So the fact that these testicles where the sperm are produced hang outside of the body helps to protect the sperm. Um, like I said, the testes are the site of sperm production or spermatogenesis, and they also act as an endocrine gland, so they will produce testosterone, which we'll talk about the role of later. Um, a tube called the vas deferens carries the sperm or carries the sperm within the seminal fluid outside of the body during ejaculation. So you'll see that the vas deferens moves from the testes to the um, urethra. The urethra runs through the penis and carries not only urine, but will also carry the sperm outside of the body. And one interesting thing before the sperm are about to leave the body, the urethra is actually sterilized. And so any urine that was there is now taken care of, again, protecting the sperm. And then the erectile tissue of the penis is also there to be filled with blood um, and become rigid during an erection, allowing for those sperm to reach their destination. All right, on to the female anatomy. Um, the diagram I have here in the upper right-hand corner, you are responsible for knowing the highlighted um, items, so the oviduct, ovary, uterus, urinary bladder, cervix, and vagina. Um, the female anatomy, there are two ovaries, which is where the eggs are produced. They also act as an endocrine gland and secrete both estrogen and progesterone, which are important um, hormones in the menstrual cycle, which we'll see. Oviducts extend from the ovaries to the uterus. Oviducts may also be called fallopian tubes, and they extend to the uterus and transport the egg from the ovary to the uterus where fertilization may happen. The uterus is a, a large um, area of the female anatomy. It has a thick muscular wall and an inner membrane called the endometrium. The endometrium is um, highly supplied with blood and rich in nutrients. And so if an egg were to become fertilized, the endometrium is there to um, supply the egg or the developing fetus, I should say, with nutrients. However, if the egg does not become fertilized, the egg is expelled along with the endometrium in the menstrual cycle. The uterus opens via the cervix to the vagina, which is a muscular tube that is able to enlarge in order for offspring to exit. Okay, so we're going to actually stay with the female um, cycle right now. Um, we will talk about the male process here in another lesson, but today we're going to be focused on female. So 11.4.4 asks us to annotate a diagram of the ovary to show the location and function of germinal epithelium, primary follicles, mature follicles, and the secondary oocyte. Um, so here we have a light micrograph of an ovary with um, some developing eggs. And we're going to learn all the different names in this process. Um, but just to give you a little bit of background, ovaries are about 3 centimeters long and about 1.5 centimeter thick. They do produce eggs. They are the endocrine gland. 
secreting estrogen and progesterone. And like I said, the oviducts or fallopian tubes connect the ovary to the uterus. Um, there are cells called um, germinal epithelial cells that line the outer surface of the ovary. And they will divide by mitosis to produce oogonia. And oogonia um, are cells that could become eggs. Um, so next we're going to actually go through the process of a cell becoming a mature egg. And one interesting thing to keep in mind um, with a female, the female is actually born with the number of cells that she will have mature into eggs. So once a female is born, she's already basically got her egg supply, even though it's immature, and that number won't change throughout her life. Um, whereas with a male, their sperm is produced constantly throughout the life of a male. Okay, so like I said, the oogonia are um, produced from germinal epithelial cells on the outer lining of the ovary. Um, they will mature into oocytes, which is basically a mature egg in the ovary, um, where they are surrounded by layers of follicle cells. And a follicle cell is almost like a protective cell for this forming egg. Um, we're going to look at a diagram next that kind of goes through this process, but in the first stage of the egg maturity process, um, it's surrounded by what's called a primary follicle. And so this is just a layer of cells surrounding the oocyte. During menstruation, the primary follicle will mature and the wall will thicken. Um, so the primary follicle will change, it will thicken, and it will form into what's called the secondary follicle. The secondary follicle, once it is complete, um, the egg will continue to mature and it will rupture during ovulation. And ovulation is the time when an egg has matured and is now moving through the oviduct to the uterus um, for potential fertiliz fertilization. Um, at this point, the ruptured follicle will convert into what's called the corpus luteum. And this actually acts as a temporary endocrine gland and it secretes progesterone. And um, if the egg becomes fertilized, the corpus luteum will continue to produce progesterone throughout the pregnancy. However, if the egg is not fertilized, it will degenerate quickly and um, the cells will be digested. Okay, so let's put this whole process together. Here I have a diagram of an ovary, and what it is showing is basically all of the different steps of what I just said, but in one diagram. And so throughout the cell, we've got these little cells, and those are our oogonia. They will um, be the cells that can mature into um, an oocyte or an egg. And so those cells get surrounded by follicle cells. The follicle cells protect and nourish the oogonia. Um, the follicle will develop, it will grow in size, and so both of these are considered primary follicles. Um, and as the cell matures, the follicle grows. Eventually, um, the follicle will enlarge um, and the wall will thicken, and this is called a secondary follicle, so both of these would be considered secondary follicles. And then eventually, once the um, woman is in ovulation, that secondary follicle will rupture, releasing the egg into the oviduct or fallopian tube, where it will travel to the uterus. Meanwhile, the secondary follicle is going to develop into something called the corpus luteum, the corpus luteum um, produces progesterone, and like I said, progesterone will come into play if the egg gets fertilized. Otherwise, the corpus luteum will quickly degenerate and break down while the egg is expelled through the vagina. Real quickly, I just want to go back to our um, light microscope image, our primary follicle. Um, seen here in a secondary follicle and in the secondary follicle you can really clearly see those follicle cells surrounding the egg cell. Harder to see in the primary but that is what we're looking at. 
Okay, the last thing we need to do is actually go through the menstrual cycle and how it relates to um, egg development, fertilization, etc. So 6.6.2 .6 asks us to outline the role of hormones in the menstrual cycle, including FSH, which is follicle-stimulating hormone, LH, luteinizing hormone, estrogen, and progesterone. So first I'm going to tell you what each hormone is um, responsible for. So we're going to start with FSH. Um, this will um, be a hormone that promotes the development of the egg. So prior to um, ovulation, prior to fertilization, this hormone is going to be increasing, promoting the development of the egg in the follicle. Um, it will cause not only the follicle to form, but the follicle wall to thicken. It will cause secretion of follicular fluid protecting the cell, the egg cell, and it will cause secretion of estrogen once the follicle wall has developed. Luteinizing hormone is going to promote the completion of meiosis by the oocyte. So one interesting thing is, like I said, when a woman is born, she has all of the cells that will develop into eggs for her life. However, because those eggs are immature, they haven't actually completed the process of meiosis. And so luteinizing hormone will come into play to complete that process prior to ovulation. Luteinizing hormone also partially digests the follicle wall for the secondary follicle and allows the follicle to burst open, causing ovulation. And then lastly, luteinizing hormone causes the growth of the corpus luteum, which remember secretes estrogen and progesterone. So luteinizing hormone is going to be rising until the, um, until the uh, production of estrogen and progesterone, and then we'll see a change. And so both of these hormones are pituitary hormones produced by the pituitary gland, and we'll take a look now at estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen and progesterone are produced by the ovary. So remember I said that the ovary is not only um, the site of cell maturation, but it is also, also can act as an um, endocrine gland. So estrogen and progesterone are, are produced by the ovary. Um, they're absorbed by female cells where they're going to influence gene expression and therefore influence development. So individually, estrogen causes the thickening of the endometrium, which remember is the lining of the uterus that will supply the egg should it become fertilized. It promotes blood vessel growth in the endometrium, so bringing greater blood flow to the area again should the egg become fertilized. It also <clears throat> causes an increase in FSH receptors in the follicle, so it's going to promote follicle um, development as those receptors respond to FSH. And then it will inhibit FSH secretion and the stimulation of LH secretion when it is very high. So when estrogen is super high, it's going to shut off that FSH and LH and we'll see a big change in the uterus. Progesterone maintains the thickening of the endometrium wall. So remember the corpus luteum will be secreting progesterone if the cell should become fertilized. And so if the cell is fertilized, it's going to need a thick endometrium to supply the developing um, embryo. And so progesterone is going to promote that. It will also inhibit FSH and LH secretion um, so that ovulation will not happen if the cell becomes fertilized. And so progesterone is there just in case the egg becomes fertilized and then it will go away if the egg is not fertilized in order for the next ovulation to occur. Um, and just a little side note, when a woman goes through puberty, it's triggered by the hypothalamus um, and it's going to be causing the initial release of FSH and LH, which enhance the secretion of these sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone, progesterone and causes... Um, ovulation to begin. Uh, the hypothalamus also triggers puberty in males, which we will talk about more later. Okay, so now I'd like to just go through the menstrual cycle step by step so we can see how all four of these hormones come into play together. And it may be handy for you to have your menstrual cycle graph um, nearby so that you can see how these 
hormones rise and fall. Also, there's space on the back of that graph for you to record um, the uses for each of the hormones. So we're going to start at the beginning of the cycle, so immediately following bleeding or the end of the previous cycle. So step one, FSH is secreted by the pituitary gland and will stimulate the development of several eggs. So several eggs will be surrounded by follicle cells and begin to mature. The developing follicles will secrete estrogen. So estrogen is being produced by these follicle cells. And remember that estrogen um, is going to be increasing FSH receptors. So these two hormones kind of work hand in hand. Es estrogen will also stimulate the buildup of the uterine lining, the endometrium, and eventually will inhibit secretion of FSH by the pituitary gland once estrogen has reached its peak. Um, estrogen production continues until it reaches its peak and then stimulates the release of LH. LH, remember, is going to be digesting the follicle wall so that the follicle, secondary follicle, may rupture and the egg can be released. And then it will stimulate the conversion of the empty follicle into the corpus luteum, which will in turn begin to produce progesterone. So the corpus luteum has formed. Like I said, it secretes progesterone. That will maintain endometrium buildup and inhibit the secretion of LH. So LH is no longer needed now that um, the follicle has ruptured. Once FSH and LH are low, because both have been shut off at this point, um, it allows the corpus luteum to degenerate, which will then decrease estrogen and progesterone. Um, and so this would be a case just if fertilization does not occur. So FSH and LH are going to drop once fertilization has not occurred. Um, the corpus luteum will degenerate. Estrogen and progesterone production will drop. And the endometrium will no longer be maintained and is therefore lost or shedded through the, the vagina. Low progesterone then stimulates the secretion of FSH. And then we start this process all over again. This whole process takes approximately 28 days. The only exception to this 28 day cycle is fertilization. And so if a sperm reaches the egg and fuses with the egg, the developing embryo will become an endocrine gland itself. So the developing embryo will become an endocrine gland and secretes hormones that will maintain the corpus luteum for the first 16 weeks. And in turn, that will maintain the endometrium. Once the fetus has reached 16 weeks, the placenta is fully formed and will take over as the endocrine gland, preventing ovulation, preventing um, shedding of the uterine, uterine lining, and protecting the developing fetus. So the placenta will be, like I said, producing um, estrogen and progesterone to prevent that ovulation. Okay, our last assessment statement for today is 6.6.3, .6 and it asks us to annotate a graph showing hormone levels in the menstrual cycle. So what I'd like you to do is take the graph that I provided for you and add some annotations to this, add some descriptions for every high and low for each of the four home hormones. I want you to describe what's going on. Also, this diagram has um, drawings of a developing egg. So we've got um, ogonia, primary follicle, secondary follicle, corpus luteum. Um, and then we see the buildup and breakdown of the endometrium. Okay, so this is a case where fertilization has not um, occurred. Um, please think of questions, think of things that don't make sense. This is a complicated process, a complicated unit, and I'd like you to be prepared to ask questions when we are in class. Thank you.